up y'all? I go with Flotox. Just about the end of September 2020. Out here running on the north side of Chicago. Been listening to a series of interviews with Wim Hof, Wim Hof the past few days. Really thinking about breath work and how breathing can heal. And how he talks about using cold water immersion and deep deep breathing which allows for larger amounts of CO2 absorption <coughs> deep breathing exercises that lead to larger amounts of CO2 absorption in the body Which, hold on, this bus. <laughs> and how holding your breath longer and deeper allows for the gas, CO2 which we exhale to enter into our bloodstream and change our cells at a, I guess, a molecular level. I really, I do not know the science on this at all. But using these, these things to tap into our our endocrine system and our nervous system and our immune system and using breath work to realign all of those systems which might be nominally operating at a at a flight or fight mode because we still we deal with so much stress still at our modern world, but there's so little uh, physical exertion that our body doesn't really know how to handle such stress, which can lead to psychological or uh, lifestyle problems. Sorry, having a having a tough time gathering my thoughts today. Sort of tough to explain something that you don't know the science to and how it is a benefit. Because as Wim Hof says, to feel is to understand. To understand is to know. So we don't really truly know something until we feel it. And regardless of the science or the facts, we, we don't really know the set benefits until we do it ourselves, until we feel it ourselves. And I have felt it at points. I'm quite bad at practicing my breath work and meditating and using mindfulness and taking time to really focus that. But that's sort of the point of this podcast, this vlog, I should say. And the conversations I'm trying to open up around it 
weeks for me to try to implement these ways of thinking and these lifestyles into my way of living. Because I might know about them, but I don't truly understand them until I feel their effects and I feel the results of various techniques, esoteric or exoteric, spiritual or religious. It all, the only thing that matters with any of this self-help, build yourself up, heal yourself, new age, yogic, shamanistic trend is the effect on the individual. That's its only true goal, is to truly affect the individual undergoing the practice and to truly give them something new and different via that practice. And as many traditions have known, breath work, many Eastern traditions, and occult and esoteric traditions of the West, religions and whatnot, knew the power of the breath. And proclaimed it. And we've probably lost so much of what we know of what the breath can truly do. But I believe we're relearning. We're reopening that gate. That gate into our own deep physio physiology and deep psychology. To actually truly enact a change in ourselves and heal ourselves psychologically and physically. started listening to Frank Von Himmel's uh, science history podcast and how he talks about these chemicals we use for agriculture, these chemicals we use for I mean I guess it's everything in the manufacturing of goods and in the manufacturing of pesticides and agricultural goods and oil. From that production of those various things comes a production of a whole onslaught of what they call persistent organic pollutants, pops that have now come to coat our entire world where in which there is no environment on the on the surface of the planet that does not contain some pollutant from lead to freaking teflon i think you said benzene i forget and how, how all of these persistent organic pollutants have a, or not all of them, but many of them are endocrine disruptors affecting our production of hormones such as estrogen and testosterone and adrenaline. Which then have effects not only on public health well, I mean, all public health, but not only public physical health, but public mental health as well. Coming up to a pretty noisy intersection here. Western and Logan. I'm gonna head over 
down under the expressway, the interstate. Anyways, so as we have been, and the major thing is, these, these pollutants aren't produced by your everyday consumer, they're produced by your everyday worldwide corporation, you know, who produce so many externalities like pollute, chemical and toxic externalities that they never pay for that you know it's once again the slow violence it's a slow violence against the poor and those people who can't buy themselves out of this situation of being exposed to those pollutants so we have companies like GE and BP and Standard Oil U.S. Steel, fucking Procter & Gamble, all these petrochemical industries, all of these chemical industries, all of these companies, all of these industries have such a vast and large effect on our water systems and our air that we now live in it everywhere. And anywhere we go, we are living in it. Because corporations refuse to take responsibility for the for the externalities, you know, the external being effects from the making of their product that they do not pay for. You wanna refine gat oil, you're gonna make pet coke. Where does all that petroleum coke go? It goes to the south side of Chicago amongst Hispanic and black communities who have outrageous rates of asthma and COPD and emphysema and so many other health problems all because BP does not want to store its pet coke in a location that's safe for everyone. They don't want to take care of it properly. So they expose the poorest and most vulnerable of our populations to their, their pollutants, their waste. And every day, no matter how rich we are, we can't escape it. Even the most rich who have caused this problem, who have led these corporations to pollute the earth like they have, even these rich people who have led the way in destroying our earth are not protected from the destruction of our earth. They will be affected too. And yeah, they're digging their bunkers and they're, they're calculating the doomsday and hopefully hoping that their money can save them and their resources save them and their family and their fallout, their private fallout shelters. Anyways, so everyone is exposed and everyone will be exposed. And all the while, our nervous systems, our endocrine systems, our immune systems are being hijacked by our polluted environment. And we're told that we're the ones that have to make a change to make a difference. All these corporations can continue to reap outstanding mar margins, profit margins, in this game of extraction economics. That's all they're doing. They're extracting as much as they can for themselves, perpetuating the collapse of the climate. This is climate collapse. Fucking, the West Coast is burning. You know, it's gonna follow flooding. You know, it's gonna follow 
freaking landslides. Tens of thousand people are being displaced in California alone right now. Supposedly the home of, you know, California. Whatever. So we had to make a concerted effort to to protect ourselves from our endocrine immune and nervous systems being hijacked by externalities of mega corporations who refuse to take any accountable action to help clean up the mess they've made. It would cost too much money. They've reaped, they've done too much damage for them to to see it as a a good business business approach. I mean, I don't need to explain this to you guys. You guys, it's not profitable to keep the world clean, at least at first. But in the name of quick profits, we're going to destroy every opportunity to make progress in the future because we're just here to bang it out real quick and fuck the world away. And this is exactly why Wim Hof's breathing techniques and methods in which you can tap down back into your immune system and tap into your endocrine system and your and your nervous system and reconfigure them in a way in which you have control over them. And doing this through breath, breath work, I guess, is one of the main best ways to do it. But doing this, you know, you have direct control of your impulses. Or you can try to put them more in control and realize them. And quitting smoking, these are a lot of the things I've used to help myself quit smoking. Deep breathing, meditation, seeing a therapist, doing a, last year I was doing saunas and cold shower intervals to help re-tap into my nervous system and try to reset it a bit. And also using, you know, marijuana helped quite a bit in suppressing the urge to smoke. At least I still had something to smoke that was not so physically addictive, or not physically addictive at all. I guess, I don't know how I want to state that, but nicotine is on a different level of addiction than marijuana. And the claws that truly grips into your nervous system are felt quite physically. And that's how you feel it. You feel and you understand how your addiction, you feel your addiction, you understand your addiction. But feeling it is the toughest thing. It hurts to feel your addiction, to fight it, to not give into it and to stare it in the face, to look at it. Anyways, I wish I was a little more succinct in my thoughts during these vlogs. I seem to run out of time so quickly. But I just wanted to sort of share the things I've been thinking about the past few days. I haven't vlogged in maybe five days or so. I ran yesterday, but I didn't I didn't record anything. So I really am trying to hold myself accountable. Try to give myself a rough outline of ideas I want to talk about for each run. And try to be a little more succinct and clear in my thoughts. 
and how they sort of connect together and how I sort of think about different issues. So today sort of connecting Frank Von Hippel's stuff I've heard on Frank Von Hippel's podcast about persistent organic pollutants and endocrine disruptors and in the worldwide and worldwide pollution and connect that with the work I've been trying to do with breathing and really listening to Wim Hof's some of Wim Hof's interviews about breath work and tapping deep into the physiological level that is usually controlled by unconscious by the unconscious so at all I see the connection in that with the ever increasing threat of POPs in our environment and them disrupting our endocrine system we really need to learn how to gain control of our endocrine system one more time I think through yoga exercise flow states breathe breath work all of that can be done can be done with time I mean saunas and cold water immersion which I found very effective but in which I have not practiced since COVID started anyways I find all of this stuff to be quite helpful in detoxing my own body and reducing my cravings to manageable thoughts in which I have impulse control over the more we have control over our impulses the better world we can make by only taking what we need by sharing by controlling our our gimme 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 attitudes anyways I think that'll be it for today I try to touch back in tomorrow with some more thoughts I'd like to talk more about some of the basic divisions and the human and humanity that I see that really have more might have more effect on our culture than we like to admit and sort of break them down into altruism and autonomy and we'll sort of try to talk more about that I'll try to talk more about that tomorrow anyways this is flow talks I Feigl this is great talking to you guys again I'm trying to be more accountable and more persistent with this a little more clear let me know if you guys have any thoughts or comments or questions hit me up on twitter at i underscore f-e-i-g-l-e hit the subscribe button if you'd like i'd very much appreciate it i think i have four subscribers at the moment so this is all an act of pure-hearted will there's nothing in it at this point other than my thoughts. So let me know what you think. Peace and love. Embrace the difference. Embrace the change. Flow talks. I Feigl. Peace out.